Good evening, my friends, and welcome to Mantwish Waters Community Presbyterian Church's Monday, Thursday, and Good Friday communion service. We have a special opportunity this night to be able to share with some of our confirmands who will be helping to lead this service itself, and, and just really excited to have them joining us. Um, we will be having Angus and August Callender and Chance and Axel Jacobs will be joining us. Angus and August, would you please come forward? You can take your masks off for the time being. Okay, I've been shot and double shot, so I think I'm about as safe as I'll be for a while. Okay, let's begin the service. Why are we gathered together on this night of darkness? Why is this table set before us? This is a dark night of remembering. On this night, we remember Jesus joining the disciples for the Passover. He broke bread and said it was his body. He poured out the cup and said it was his blood. We remember his broken body, and we raise up his cup of grief. We remember the one who died for us. We allow ourselves to be touched by his presence with us, and we know he will come again to set our suffering world right. Let us pray in silence, seeking his forgiveness for what we have done and for what we have failed to do the Lord's power in amending who we are, and the, guide, the Spirit's guidance in directing us into what we shall be. We bow in silence now before his cross. Please take a moment of silent reflection. At this point, would you please pause the service, link to song number one, What Wondrous Love Is This? And after the song is completed, please close that tab alone and then resume the service. Thank you. Would you please join me in the prayer of confession? When the red portions come forward, that there's unison readings in red. Uh, some of them, there's some that's confusing because some of it is in red that's not unison readings, but it'll be fairly uh, clear, I think, the portions that you join us on. If we say we have no sin, we are liars and the truth is not in us, says John. But if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just, forgiving our sins, and cleansing us from all unrighteousness. Sinners and saints, sisters and brothers in Christ, we join now in our prayer of confession. Almighty God, we confess we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart, and we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. Lord, we ask for your mercy and forgiveness. When we reflect on your commandments, O God, we are uneasy. We realize that we have fallen so short of your desires for us. If we have placed other gods before you, gods of greed and lust and idols of selfish desire, in, in your, your mercy, mercy, forgive us. If we have dishonored your name with our words or acknowledged you through the habits of our hearts and the actions of our bodies. In, in your, your mercy, mercy forgive, forgive us. If we have not taken Sabbath rest and through our activity prevented others from resting as well. In, in your, your mercy, mercy forgive, forgive us. us. If we have neglected to remember who you are and who we are in you, and if we have either neglected our families or held them so tightly we have observed your place in our lives, in, in your, your mercy, mercy forgive, forgive us. Lord, if we have murdered others in our hearts by nursing grudges or by holding others contempt, in, in your, your mercy, mercy forgive, forgive us. If we have yearned for things entrusted to others, and if we have misrepresented both ourselves and our neighbors with half-truths, mistruths, and lies, in, in your, your mercy, mercy forgive, forgive us. us. Lord, you are holy, and we are not, yet we remember you are anxious to show us your steadfast love. 
Help us live in your loving grace. Follow your will for our lives. And seek f- first your kingdom and your righteousness. In your, your mercy, mercy forgive, forgive us. us. For what we have done, which we should not have done, and for failing to do what we should have done, in your your mercy, mercy, forgive us. us. Sisters and brothers, through the love and sacrifice of Jesus the Christ, though our sins are like scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall be white as wool. In the name of the crucified one, we are forgiven. Amen. Would you please pause the service at this point, link to song number two, Amazing Grace, after which please close that tab alone and then resume the service. Thank you. On the first day of the unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus, saying, where do you want us to make the preparations for you to eat the Passover? Jesus answered, saying, Go into the city to a certain man, and say to him, The teacher says, My time is near. I will keep the Passover at your house with my disciples. So so the disciples did as Jesus had directed them, and they prepared the Passover meal. When it was evening, he came with the twelve. And when they had taken their places and were eating, Jesus said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They began to be distressed and said to him, one after another, Surely not I. He said to them, It is one of the twelve, one who is dipping bread into the bowl with me. For the Son of Man goes as it is written of him. But woe to that one by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that, that one not to have been born. I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer, for I tell you, I will not eat it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we come before you this night to remember. We thank you for this night above all nights, for this is the night. When we remember the way in which you took the bread and broke it, and took the cup and shared it, We come asking you to be present this night with us, to make yourself known in the breaking of the bread and drinking from the cup. We ask you to lead us in our own spiritual growth. When we fail and fall, help us get up again. When we make mistakes, help us seek your forgiveness and help. When we're moving in the wrong direction, help us stop and turn and move again into your grace. Lord Jesus, we come before you this night to remember to share your sufferings and to invite you into the heart of our thoughts, memories, and feelings. We come here tonight to see parts of ourselves lived out in the stories of the Gospels. We see in the disciples, in Peter, James, and John, and even in Judas. Parts of ourselves that draw back from you in fear, in misunderstanding, in weakness, and in sin. We come here tonight to see again how our mistakes have been corrected how our shortcomings have been made whole, and how our brokenness has been healed. We ask you to now bless this bread and this cup, that they may make your presence among us known, now and always. For we pray as Jesus taught us, saying together, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Would you please pause the service at this point, open to song number three, let us break bread together on our knees. And after the song is completed, please close that tab alone and then resume the service. Thank you.
Almighty God, we ask you to bless the bread that we receive and bless the cup that's poured out. May they be for us the visible presence of Christ himself with us, in us, and for us. We thank you and praise you for that precious gift. Amen. On the night in which Jesus was betrayed by his friends, after he had given thanks as we have done, he took the bread and he broke it. He said, take and eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In a like manner, after they had eaten, he took the cup and he said, this cup is the new covenant which is sealed in my blood, shed for the forgiveness of sins. Drink of it, all of you, in remembrance of me. For the apostle reminds us, as often as we eat of the bread and, and drink of the cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. Thanks be to God. Amen. At this time, would you please share the, the broken bread with one another, saying to one another, the body of Christ for you. The body of Christ for you. In the body of Christ, for you, take and eat. And after they had eaten, he took the cup, the cup of the new covenant, Take and drink of it, all of you, in remembrance of me. Lord God, we praise you for the gift of your very self. We praise you for the affliction and suffering you've undergone for us your obedience in the face of temptation, your courage in the battle for what is good and true and right, your endurance under the crippling weight of pain and grief. We praise you for your strength as you tear open the very gates of hell for our salvation. Help us, O oh God, to sense anew the breadth and depth of your love for us. May your spirit shape our lives in such a way that they yield to your will in our daily activities and relationships. For we commit ourselves into your care and keeping through Jesus Christ our Lord. Once again, I'd like to welcome uh, Chance and Axel Jacobs, who will be uh, helping participate in the service, the remainder of the service. Would you please pause, link the service to song number five, O Sacred Head Now Wounded, and after that, please close the tab and, and come back to us. I am the spirit of this night. I'm darkness. My world is dark. The mists of the evening, they envelop my movements. In my company is fear and uncertainty. This night begun with, with fellowship and feasting. It now turns to tears and temptation. In my shadow, Judas betrays his master and friend. I blanket the eleven with the numbing weight of heavy sleep. I weave among the soldiers and priests silently stalking the garden paths. I am darkness. I am the secrets of your life, carefully hidden yet fully known. 
Beneath my cloud lays doubt, dread, and despair. I sit among you in the shadows. I cloud your eyes this night, coming as a shade of the past. My color is, is black, the absence of light, the color of life without love, the, the bleakness of relationships without forgiveness, the blackness of death without resurrection. Together we plunge into the abyss of darkness. The savior of the world is betrayed and denied, crucified and damned. Travel with me, sense my spirit and enter the shadows of the night, enter the shadow lands of Gethsemane. When they had sung the hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. And Jesus said to them, You will all become deserters because of me this night. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. Peter said to him, Through all become deserters because of you. I will never desert you. Truly, I tell you, Peter, this very night before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. Jesus told the disciples, Sit here while I go to pray. Jesus took with him Peter, James, and John, and he began to be grieved and agitated. In his anguish, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat became like great drops of blood falling down on the ground. And Jesus prayed, saying, I am deeply grieved, even to the point of death. Remain here and stay awake with me. And going a little further, he drew himself on the ground and prayed, Abba, my Father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Yet not my will, but thine be done. Then Jesus came to Peter and the other two disciples and found them sleeping. Could you not stay awake with me one hour? Stay awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. I cause his soul to melt and his heart's dear treasure drips with, with blood as the only beads his words can measure. I haze their minds, I cloud their hearts, piercing them with sin's soft darts. I move through their drowsy brains, reigning over all their previous claims. Again, he went away a second time and prayed, Abba, my father, if it is possible, take this cup away from me. Again, he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were heavy. So leaving them again, he went away and prayed for the third time, Abba, my father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Yet not my will, but thine be done. Jesus then rose from prayer, he came to Peter, James, and John and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Behold, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Arise, my betrayer is at hand. While he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. With him was a large crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I will kiss is the man, arrest him. At once he came up to Jesus and said, Greetings, Rabbi, and kissed him. And Jesus looked upon him, saying, Judas, do you betray the Son of Man with a kiss? In the dark garden, Judas betrays with a kiss, and there he forfeits true life and bliss, and finds death instead on Christ's dear lips. Those with the chief priests and elders came with swords and clubs and seized Jesus away and led him. Bringing him into the high priest's house, Peter followed at a distance. 
And when they had kindled a fire in the middle of the courtyard and sat down together, Peter sat among them. Then a maid, seeing Peter as he sat in the light and gazing at him, said this man also was with him. Peter replied, Woman, I don't know him. And a little later, someone else saw him and said, You also are one of them. Peter said, I am not. And after an interval of about an hour, still another insisted, saying, Certainly, this man was also with him, for he is a Galilean. But Peter began to invoke a curse on himself and to swear, I don't know this man you're speaking about. And as the cock began to crow, Peter remembered how Jesus had said, Before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. I drift into the night, filling all with confusion and fear, cackling accusations and bitter, cock-crowing tears. Now the chief priests and the whole council sought testimony against Jesus to put him to death, but they found none, for many bore false witness against him, and their witness did not agree. The high priest stood up and asked Jesus, Have you no answers to make? But he was silent and made no answer. Again the high priest asked him, Are you the Christ, the Son of the Blessed? And Jesus replied, I am and you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power and coming with the clouds of heaven. And the high priest tore his robes and said, He has uttered blasphemy. Why do we still need witnesses? You've heard his blasphemy. What is your judgment? They answered, He deserves death. And they spat in his face and struck him. And some slapped him, saying, Prophesy to us, you Christ. Who is it that struck you? When morning came, all the assembly of the elders of the people gathered together, both chief priests and scribes, and they led him away and delivered him to Pilate. And Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, You have said so. The chief priests and the elders then accused him of many things, but he made no reply. Then Pilate said to him, Don't you hear how many things they testify against you? But he gave no answer, not even to a single charge, so that the governor wondered greatly. And Pilate said to the chief priests and the multitudes, I find no crime in this man. But they were urgent, saying, He stirs up the people, teaching throughout all Judea, from Galilee even to this place. Pilate spoke to the chief priests and the rulers and the people, and said to them, You brought me this man, as one who is perverting the people, and after examining him before you, behold, I did not find this man guilty of any of your charges against him. Behold, nothing deserving death has been done by this man. I will therefore chastise him and release him. Now at the feast he used to release for them one prisoner for whom they asked. And among the rebels in prison who had committed murder in the insurrection, there was a man called Barabbas. So when they had gathered, Pilate said to them, Who do you want me to release for you, Barabbas or Jesus, who is called Christ? For he knew that it was out of envy that they had delivered him up. And they cried out, Barabbas! Pilate said to them, Then what shall I do with Jesus, who is called Christ, the King of the Jews? Crucify him! Crucify him! And Pilate said to them, Why? What evil has he done? Crucify him! Crucify him! When Pilate saw that he was gaining nothing, but rather that a riot was beginning, he took water and washed his hands before the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. See to it yourselves. Then he released for them Barabbas, and having scourged Jesus, he delivered him to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the Praetorium, and they gathered the whole battalion before him, and they stripped him and put a scarlet robe upon him, 
and braiding a crown of thorns, they had put it on his head and put a reed in his right hand. And kneeling before him, they mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! And they spat upon him and took the reed and struck him on the head. And when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the robe and put his own clothes on him. And they led him away to crucify him. I incite their hearts into mocking wrath, so they buffet and box him in their path. They jab the thorns upon his head and drape him as the king of the dead, dressing him in the regal array. They show the colors of his blood to be the only way. I bow their knees and they cry, Hail, King, and spew out their venom and all the scorn they can bring. The soldiers spit upon that face which angels once beheld in his heavenly place. As they went out, they came upon a man of Cyrene, Simon by name, and they compelled him to carry Jesus' cross. And they went to a place called Golgotha, which means place of a skull. They offered him wine to drink, mingled with gall, but when he tasted it, he would not drink it. They, div they divided his garments among them, casting lots for them to decide what each should take. And over his head they put the charge against him, which read, This is Jesus, King of the Jews. Then two robbers were crucified with him, one on the right and one on the left. And those who passed by derided him, wagging their heads, and saying, You who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. If you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. He trusts in God. Let God deliver him now, if he desires him. For he said, I am the Son of God. One of the criminals who were hanged railed at him, saying, Are you not the Christ? Save yourselves and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Don't you fear God? Since you're under the same sentence of condemnation, and we indeed justly, for we are receiving the due rewards of our deeds, but this man has done nothing wrong. And he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Truly, said Jesus, this day you will be with me in paradise. Standing near the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. Jesus saw his mother and a disciple whom he loved standing near. He said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour the disciple took her to his own home. And when the sixth hour had come, there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour. And at the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani? My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Lo, there he hangs, charged with a world of sin. By his grief and sorrow, it's you he must win. Such sorrow, if sinful people could truly feel, could not but help fall down and kneel. His soul is torn with shame and tears. Sharp nails drive him into his darkest fears. His parched throat is scalded with vinegar and gall. And yet he was the one who with life has fed them all. Now he alone hangs on the tree, lifted in a curse that all may see. After this, Jesus, knowing all was now finished, said, I thirst. A bowl full of vinegar stood there, so they put a sponge full of the vinegar on hyssop and held it up to his mouth. Then Jesus, crying with a loud voice, said, Father, into thy hands I commit my spirit. Jesus then said, It is finished, 
and he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. They will pierce him in his side, and all will know that as sin has come, so sacraments might flow. Now he dies, now all is finished. He bows his head, and let others say when he is dead that never was grief like thine.